In this lecture, we are going to start a new module in HyperMesh that is about analysis. So till now we had learned about different types of meshing and we have already learned about analysis of 1D element. Now we are going to continue the analysis and we will learn how to do the analysis using 2D element, 3D analysis, using different types of contact many and many more complex analysis. So initially we are going to start with a simple analysis and later on we will move on to some complex problems. So here you can see we have a problem. We have a beam or we can consider this as a plate. So we have a plate like this. For this plate we are going to apply a force here. You can see we are pulling it in the rightward direction. Similarly we are going to pull it from the leftward direction. It means we are going to apply a tensile force. Okay, tensile force. This is the value of the force. Now let's consider the dimension of this part. For this part you can see we are considering this as a plate. For this plate we have this length value that is 100, width is 50 and the thickness is 4 mm. This is the unit system we are going to follow Newton mm second. For mass it is ton. And here we are going to take the simple type of material that is steel. For the material, for this steel material we know that this is the value of Young's modulus and this is the value of Poisson's ratio. So this is a linear type of analysis. It means the force is directly proportional to the displacement. Later on in this course we will also learn about the nonlinear analysis. First of all we need to understand how can we simplify this problem in a FEA software because here you can see in this problem we are going to apply the force from both direction but when you solve this problem in FEA software in any software we need to apply a constraint or we can say boundary condition at least at a single point or any single phase etc. So we must apply a boundary condition otherwise the analysis will not run. So here you can see right now there is no boundary condition because we are going to apply a force from both direction. So first we need to simplify this geometry. So we are going to simplify it like this. Here what will we do is we are going to fix this plate from the left side let's say here it is fixed and on the right side the force of this value is applied. When you apply this much force on the right side automatically a reaction force will be generated in the reverse direction here. This will be reverse direction and it will be equal to this force. So in this way we can simplify our problem. So now we are going to fix it. We are going to apply this value of length. So first let me do some hand calculations of this. If you do the hand calculation in this type of problem. Okay the value of this force is basically 50,000 Newton here. And when we apply the formula here stress equal to force divided by area. So this value will turn out to be because we can see the cross sectional area will be 15 to 4. So this value will be 250 megapascal. And let's say we want to find out the deformation or the displacement in the body then we need to apply this stress equal to strain into Young's modulus. So here we know that stress equal to force divided by area, strain equal to change in length by original length and this is Young modulus. So we have all these values. So we have value of length, area, E, F. We can calculate the value of displacement here, this much value. Also we want to check whether this part will break or not. So here for the steel, the yield stress is 240 megapascal. So yield stress is basically the limit of the stress after which the part will break. So generally in automotive industries we consider a factor of safety somewhere close to 1.3. So when we consider this factor of safety here 1.3 the safe stress will be 240 divided by 1.3 that will be this value. So here you can see by handy calculations the value is 250 which is much greater than the safe stress. So we can make a conclusion that the part will break eventually when we apply this load. So in the next lecture we are going to solve this problem in hypermesh.